Hey, what's up? So today I'm going to show you how to make brutalist sci-fi buildings. Now, I've been making these buildings for a recent animation I've been working on, just a personal project where I'm taking scenes and shots from Neon Genesis Evangelion and recreating them in Blender. So if you want to see kind of how I've been working on that project, I'll leave a link in the description or put one up here or whatever. You can also check out my socials where I've been uploading a lot of the rendered animations there. So I'm going to show you how to make those buildings right now. All right, let's jump into it. So I got Blender here open, this is Blender 4. And to make my life easier and to make your life easier, I recommend you get my building pack, which is completely free. You don't have to pay for any of it. You can if you want to, but it's basically pay what you want. So you just put in zero and then you download it. So I have two versions, one that's a little bit more detailed and one that's a little bit more rough and low poly. So I'm gonna grab this Akira style building because I really think that it gives us a good amount to work with. So if I jump into the texture view, you can see how that looks. It's got these like little red lights on everything. It's got some like rooftop structures, which the original one, I think it's this one. You know, version one is the one on the left here and version two is the one on the right. So you can kind of see there's a bit of structural difference. Shape wise, looks pretty much the same, but you can just see that there's a little bit more stuff like rooftop stuff and a little bit more details. There's like these red lights that I really like. All right, so we're going to start off with this and immediately I'm just going to go and kind of just select all of this stuff and delete it. So I basically took all the like AC units and all that kind of stuff. and I'm going to delete those because I don't need them. What I really want to keep is just this kind of rooftop little room area because we're going to take this and we're just going to flatten it out and that'll make the building feel a little bit more flatter on all the top parts and then it'll give us a lot uh, more to work with. So I'm just going to hover over this spot and hit L to select all the length and then I'm going to scale it down, scale it on everything but the Z axis. And to do that, by the way, if I have this selected, I hit S to scale and then shift Z it'll scale on everything but the z-axis. So I'm just gonna scale it that way. I'm gonna scale it down again, and then just bring it over here. I'm just gonna kind of move it. Same thing with G. If you hit G and then shift Z, you'll be able to slide it on every axis but the z-axis. So I'm gonna put one over here, stretch it out, give it some variety, and then I'm gonna duplicate it with shift D, and then move it on the x-axis. I'm gonna rotate that on the z-axis. Just rotate it around. Okay, so I'm going to start adding the panels, which are just going to be these big shapes. Instead of making a new shape, I'm just going to grab like this square right here because that's pretty much exactly what I need. So I'm going to duplicate that and then move it on the x-axis. I'm going to scale it down just a little bit and then I'm going to extrude down. So extrude down on the z-axis. So we're going to hop into this view here. We can see what that looks like. And I'm going to scale it up. And I just want to kind of get it within the bounds. It doesn't have to go all the way over to the edges, but just enough to kind of cover the windows. So that looks good. And I'm going to move it on the x-axis right over the windows like that. All right. So now it's nice and snug covering the windows, but not destroying the structure of the corners. Uh, and then I'll do another one. So I'm going to duplicate that and bring it down like here. I'll just kind of leave some of the windows visible. So I'm going to move this one up. Like here, I kind of like this part peeking through, so I'm going to leave that and then bring this one down. I think that's good. I think kind of leaving some of the windows visible more towards the bottom feels right to me. So I'm just going to hover over these two and then press P to separate them. So then now these are a separate object from the buildings. I'm going to set the origin to the origin of the geometry, get a top down view. So I'm going to take this, duplicate it, bring it over here. And now we're, we're going to cover this side. So I'm going to rotate it on the Z, 90 degrees, put it here. I'm going to select it all in edit mode and then scale it on the X axis just to get the width enough. All right. Now that should look pretty good. And now for this side, I think I'm going to just cover most of it up. So I'm going to grab this face, bring it down like that. I kind of like the middle part. So I'm going to see if I can do a loop cut here and then do like a split like that. And I'll just delete those faces. So then we kind of have the windows covered up, but we don't have the like center part covered up. I'm going to go into edge select mode. Alt click this edge. So it selects that whole loop. And I'm going to hit F to fill that face. Alt click and then F to fill. All right. So that looks nice to me. I'm going to duplicate this onto the other side. I want to give it a bit of variety. If we copy this building and then rotate it 90 degrees each time, we'll basically have four different 
looking buildings essentially and we can kind of reuse that and use that to save resources on our scene so on this side i have this kind of version on this other side i'll do an alternate version so i'm going to shift d and move it on the y-axis to move it to the other side i'm just going to put it snug up against those windows like last time i'm going to hit Control r Control r in the middle i put it like here now i'm going to do a Control b to bevel delete these faces do the same thing I did last time, fill these faces. And now I'm just gonna do a bit of offsetting. So I'm gonna grab this edge and this edge, grab these two edges, and then move it up on the Z-axis to kind of give it like a bit of personality. I'm gonna move these up, close the gap a little bit more. I'm gonna grab this edge here, grab that edge and do a control B to bevel, and give it a bit of like opening like that. Same thing here. Just something that feels like some a bit of sci-fi pattern. I'll do the same thing here. All right, that looks kind of cool. I want to grab this edge here. Do a, little, do a little bit more. Okay, I think that looks kind of interesting. Maybe this side will also do the same thing. So like doing these bevelings uh, on the corner is a fun way to kind of get some interesting shapes and make them look a bit futuristic and geometric. I'm gonna do it here as well, but I'm gonna do a more extreme version. Bring them down so it's a little bit more dramatic. And bring these up like that. I'm gonna control B again to bevel, then delete these faces, fill them like usual. And then for this one, I'm gonna duplicate, shift them to Z, I mean on the X, bring it over here again. All right, now I want to give these kind of like a concrete texture. So I'm just going to sample the concrete texture that is already mostly being used in this building, which is this gray plaster. I'm just going to first remove all the materials from everything, from all the panels. We'll add back the plaster. So that's that. It's stretched out because the UVs are stretched out. And I'm going to shift select all these white ones and then shift select the the one that I just applied the plaster material to is the last one. Hit Control L, link materials, and now all the materials are applied to all the other objects. With all of them selected, I'm gonna go into edit mode, hit A, hit U to unwrap and do Q projection. So that kind of gives us this, oh, Q projection. Okay, there we go. Now you can kind of see the tops of the buildings look a little bit more brutalist and geometric, but I think I'm gonna go with that. I do wanna do a little bit where so for like, for example, these two faces, I'm going to select and I'm going to hit I to inset and then E to extrude just a little bit, just so that it looks a little bit more dimensional. Uh, I'm going to do the same for these, hit I to inset once, hit E to extrude. So now it looks a little bit more complicated without really adding too much geometry. Okay, cool. So I, I'm, got, I'm getting some really nice features here. I'm going to just join all of these faces together and then I'm going to parent them to the building. So let's just kind of set the scene a little bit so you can see how it looks. So this is in cycles. Oh, let me turn on the window light. So for the building pack number two, the one that's $1, um, I have this ability in, if you go to the, the glass material. So here I have this node that uh, if it's bright, for example, if the light is all on in your scene, this is set to one. But if you say, if you bring this down, it turns on like these window lights that are behind. But I do want to turn up the brightness on it. So I'm going to turn this up to like five maybe even like 10 yeah like really brighten that up like i'm gonna just scale these in on the y-axis a little bit let's add a couple of rooftop structures maybe so i'm just going to select one of these faces i'm going to shift d to duplicate and then right click to bring it back to its original spot scale it down then extrude inset not too much scale uh, bring it up, extrude again, just do it one more time. So inset, just kind of scale it, make it square, and then extrude again. So now this can be like a little, like just the antenna or something. Just kind of put it in the, I'll move it over here on the edge. Just duplicate, get it next to each other like that. And then I'll bring one like over here. Make this one maybe a little bit smaller. And these are usually kind of like on the corners, like here, not doing anything specific, just giving it a bit of variety so that, you know, when you kind of see from a distance, you know, the silhouette looks interesting, looks like there's stuff up there.
I'm going to take these little uh, lights that I have on the edge. So these are like the little aviation, the red aviation lights. So I'm going to shift D and just kind of stick them on the corner at the top of these little structures that I made. All right, cool. And that's how that looks. And so, yeah, so like, for example, I'm going to start adding some up lighting and you'll see how it really comes together. I'm going to add a big area light and then rotate that towards the building and then really increase the power. So blue, you know, makes it look a little bit more sci-fi. And then we can make this maybe a bit of an orange, kind of like an Akira or like a warmer version. So to me, orange kind of makes me think of Akira. And then this blue makes me think of like Ghost in the Shell. So if you're kind of, you know, depending on whatever vibe you're going for, I think these can work for either or. And then once you kind of have all this, let's say we want to grab all of this. I'm going to duplicate it, move it up, scale it down. And then you kind of have like this ultra big tower, a little bit more interesting. Maybe we want to scale it down, really widen it out. So now it's really starting to look like some kind of interesting sci-fi building. But yeah, I hope that was interesting and hope that was educational. So if you want the building pack, if you want to, you know, all the resources and all that kind of stuff, I'll leave links to everything down below. Now, if you want, you can have this file that I made for the thumbnail. You can see that it's the same building that I made in the tutorial. I just duplicated it, scaled it up, parented a couple things. Uh, really, it's the same building. You can see in the outline, it's the same building. And just like how I said in the beginning, where you make a little bit of variation to each side, that really can go a long way, especially if you're kind of making a very dense, uniform city. So yeah, if you want this project file, you can get that over my Patreon. I'll leave a link down in the description. And yeah, thanks for watching. See ya.